Hi and welcome everyone to Season 5 of the Ruin Hammer Live Show where we talk all things One New Zealand Warriors. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, tonight we're going to review the Warriors' thr thrilling Round 6 draw against the Manly Sea Eagles at home last Saturday. Take a quick look at the NRL Round 6 results and we're going to preview this week's Round 7 away game against the Dragons at Wynn Stadium. Plus a little bit of news that we're going to talk about tonight as well. Uh, <laughs> jo joining me tonight, as usual, is my good mate and co-host, Warrior Roo. Rob, how are you, mate? How's your week been? Mate, the week's been really good. Um, g'day to you and to everyone's watching. Thanks for all you guys who are, are commenting there. Great to have you along. Uh, mate, the the week's, the week's been interesting. It got even more interesting today. Um, I was at a, a school cross-country carnival watching my yep. daughter um, do very well in that. And my phone just dead set started blowing up. And I opened up the group chat with that we have with um, Brad and Richie and saw, saw all the news. And I was like, I better check my dates. Because you know how you get these kind of <laughs> you get these kind of messages on April 1st. But we are going to get into that in, in greater detail. But we will. Yeah, let, let's let's just say that kind of made my day. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely it did. How, how about um, yourself? How about yourself, yeah, man? mate. Yeah, yeah. Wait. Well, I was a little bit oblivious to what was going on because I, well, the first I knew was <laughs> you sent me a message, and I'm like, "What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> have I missed something here? You're like, yeah, what have I missed? Have, yeah. <laughs> have I missed some information? What's going on? So, yeah, I, I, I didn't. Once I finished work, I kind of put my phone away for a little while today, and um, yeah, so I wasn't really aware of what was going on. So, yeah, we are going to talk about that. Uh, soon, but apart from that, my week's been uh, pretty good, mate. Um, before we get into the night show, uh, we'll just get some through a little bit of housekeeping, uh, and that is if uh, I invite you, if you haven't already done so, to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel or the Facebook page, whichever you're watching on, uh, to show your support of the streaming content we create. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank our wonderful supporters and subscribers on all our social media platforms, uh, and in particular, our generous Patreon subscribers whose uh, donations enable us to continue to bring the content and guests that you all enjoy so much. And uh, just a reminder to everyone that has tuned in tonight, the reason we do the show live is to get the involvement of all of you guys watching. Uh, so please, as we move through to the discussion points, join the conversation, leave your comments, uh, but be aware that we have current next players that do uh, watch this webcast. So just keep your comments uh, respectful and refrain from making them personal or derogatory in nature. Mate, I just want to take a minute before we do get into the rugby league side of things, um, just to acknowledge and send our deepest sympathies to the families of the uh, victims uh, who lost their lives and the many more who were injured uh, in last Saturday's senseless stabbing that occurred at Bondi uh, Westfields here in Sydney. Um, such a really tragic event for everybody involved. Um, we just also want to acknowledge the, the brave civilians who risked their own lives uh, to deter that attacker uh, when he was on his uh, rampage through the shopping centre and to the hero police inspector, Amy Scott, who shot the attacker dead, um, ending any further threat. Um, yeah, terrible day in Sydney. There's been a couple of other events that have happened in Sydney, uh, similar stabbings over the past couple of days. There was a priest at a church um, the other night and that, and it's, um, yeah, I don't know where all this uh, violence in the world is coming from, but uh, to those families that were affected, um, it, Bondi, uh, yeah, we send our heartfelt uh, sympathies and condolences to you all. Yeah, yeah, as as you just said, mate. Yeah, deepest um, condolences and sympathies to the to the the, the six uh, victims that sadly lost their lives, and there was eighteen in total. And of course, we're we're um, thinking of you. And it's one of those events that you don't really expect to happen in your country. I mean, yeah. you, you read about that happening overseas, and you think that surely that kind of thing wouldn't happen. Uh, here in, in Australia, where we both are, but yeah, truly, um, yeah, tragic event and the the events that have followed as well. So um, yeah, 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 just just absolutely terrible news. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but there is there is a hot topic, a hot topic there of the is. day, and we will we will move on to that and to some slightly better news. In fact, some absolutely fantastic news. The club today. Uh, put out a statement that Kiwis captain James Fisher Harris has agreed to a four-year deal with the Warriors starting in 2025. Um, I think, as, as I said, the first I heard about it was through the, the chat group when the, the image popped up and I was like, oh, normally we receive members' emails yep. uh, alerting us to this sort of thing. 
And yeah, like blindsided is the, is is the key word. I mean, having having lost um, Adam Fenua Blake in similar like in similar circumstances last year, being completely blindsided then to this kind of news, kind of makes it uh, a, a little bit easier to take. And um, yeah, like reading through like kind of the history of it, it, it was all done in the last seventy two hours. It it yeah. all just started over the over the weekend and. The signing was uh, Cam George flew over to Sydney and got the deal done, and and here we are. And like this has to be up there, the top three signings in Warriors history, along with you know like Steve Price back in the end of two thousand and four. And again, another marquee prop that we thought we'd be no chance of signing. Yeah, reminds me a little bit of that. Uh, Steve Price coming to the club, and then obviously Roger Tuivasa-Shek in in twenty fifteen when he announced that he was coming. Yep, and but then, but then the the sort of the nature of the announcement was a real throwback to like the Sean Johnson returning to the club in 2021. Yeah, I mean, that popped up, and that is the first that you think anyone had heard about that. Um, so it's you and I had this conversation today. It's really quite quite amazing that the club has been able to keep these kind of things under wraps and have been really good at not allowing anything to leak to the media. So. Um, yeah, so after I called you and told you what was going on, how did you react to it all? Mate, uh, yeah, I was a bit uh, dumbfounded at first because, <laughs> as you said, um, credit to the club, the last 18 months uh, or, you know, two years maybe since jo- Sean signed, like that that was a signing that was kept under wraps. The Roger Tuivasa-Shek coming back to the Warriors was something that was yeah. kept under wraps. It wasn't in the media. And then we have this signing. And, and credit to the club for not... Um, you know, for you know, their their back of house obviously having, um, uh, you know, being able to be trusted with news that's coming through in that club, it doesn't get leaked to the media. Uh, you know, there's no speculation about uh, what's going on. I mean, you look at Zach Lomax; that that's been talked about for mm. a couple of weeks in the media now, uh, and this has just popped up. And as you said, 72 hours. Apparently, James went to the Panthers on Sunday um, and discussed with them his want to want to come home. Um, he was back in New Zealand a couple of weeks back. His grandfather passed away. Uh, mm. He's, you know, very family-oriented guy. And, um, yeah, uh, I think it made the decision for him that he just wanted to get home, raise his family back home in New Zealand. Um, he made a uh, – had a chat with the Panthers. Uh, his management reached out to the Warriors. And, yeah, 72 hours, it's it's done. A lot of people um, giving credit to the Panthers for allowing this to happen, but it's no different to what we've done with Adam Fenua Blake. Um, no, hundred percent. You know, we, exactly we same thing. Yeah, yeah. He, we allowed him to negotiate uh, and get a contract for next year um, under compassionate leave. Can't live in New Zealand. Blah blah blah. Same kind of thing mm-hmm. Penrith have done. They haven't asked for a transfer. They haven't asked for a player swap. We didn't do that with Ken, uh, Cronulla either. Um, but it makes you realise how fortunate we are that the Hamlin Ueli deal fell through oh, because if yes. if he had signed on the 800,000 reportedly that he was offered for the four years, um, then we wouldn't have had the money to bring James Fisher Harris home. And if he, if being New Zealand being the only team in the NRL that's based in New Zealand for him to be able to come home to, if he was adamant on getting back to New Zealand, then we would have had to have got rid of some players um, to accommodate him. Yeah. So we don't have to yep. do any of that. Um the funny thing is, the funny story coming out of all of this is that when Adam announced that he wanted to, um, under compassionate leave, leave the Warriors and the Warriors allowed him to, to start negotiating, the Warriors had a hit list of front rowers that they wanted. And of course, um, Payne Haas, Tarpanay and Fisher Harris were at the top of that list. And they actually reached out to the Panthers, not officially, and just said, hey, would you be interested in the swap deal? And they'll kind of laughed at. Now, I don't know how the Panthers would be feeling about that now because it could have been <laughs> could have got something they, out of it. Because now they're a front row short, so they're going to have to go out onto the open market and try and find somebody. Um, and that's that's on them. Good luck to them. Uh, the talk in the Aussie media today is that they're just going to be chasing big Stefano Utoi Kamano from the Tigers. He has a clause in his contract, though, that if he plays two Origin games this year, he's got to stay at the Tigers next year. So, a weird contract to have in a, a, a weird yeah. clause to have in a contract, but that's what it is. So, 
Uh, the Panthers are now in the predicament that we've been in for the last couple of weeks, um, watching uh, Fanua Blake play and thinking, how are we going to replace him? Well, we've we've replaced him, uh, and now it's up to them to find somebody to fill the hole that Fisher-Harris will leave there. But, mate, that's a massive signing, isn't it? Massive. Oh, huge. Mate, I've always been a fan of the compassionate grounds release. I've always said yep. that. You know, of course you have. It's, yep. it's, it's great that we're finally benefiting from it. it we're just so used to players saying, oh, I've got to return to Sydney for Brisbane, Absolutely. whatever, for family reasons. So thank goodness we finally benefit from something like this. Um, yep. and, and a player of his magnitude is amazing, astonishing. Absolutely. And, and yeah. I, as I said, I, I was looking at the picture. I was like, this has to be a G up. This has to be from April 1 because you never thought that he was a realistic chance of coming to the club. Like, why would you leave Penrith? You know, uh, three straight premierships, four grand finals in a row, Kiwi captain. Life must be pretty good for him. But yeah, at the end of the day, there's some things that, that are bigger than football as well. He wanted to Absolutely. come home. He wanted to raise his kids in New Zealand. He wanted his kids to experience the the culture that he grew up with. So fantastic. Even better for the club. Just absolutely bloody wrapped, mate. How good. Yeah. How good. Uh, speaking of um, how good, uh, before we move on to our review of the, the game, uh, the Warriors released the Anzac jersey uh, that they're going to wear next week against the Titans next Thursday, Anzac Day. Uh, your thoughts on that one, mate? What did you think of that jersey? Because you're the big jersey guy out of the two of yeah. us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Is that one that will find its way into the Warrior Roo collection or um, have the Warriors done you, dudded you a, a big one this year because they've released so many good things so far that we're running out of cash? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a bit of that. Um, yeah, I've, I have dropped a lot of coin on merchandise this year. Dynasty have absolutely knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Look, this jersey, um, I'll be completely honest, I, I love – the fact that they've done a little throwback to the New Zealand flag jersey at the top. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. They got the big yep. yeah, that's the one, the the classic 2011 heritage jersey. Yeah. Um I just I just feel there's there's some great ideas, but I think they've put too many of them together if you know what I mean. It's just for for my personal taste, a little bit busy. Um but I understand the message behind it and I I know that it's going to be extremely popular. Yep. So that's just my preference on it. Um, it I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'll be adding it, but I've said that a number of times about many other jerseys, <laughs> and it always finds its way into my closet. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I do. I do like. I think I when I when I um, saw a picture of it a while ago, it was like the way I described it to you is it's a cross between the flag jersey and the poppy fields jersey, which is another one of your favorites. That that yep. is my favorite Anzac jersey that we've done. Mine too. It's, I love that jersey. Yeah, it's it's subtle. It's done, you know, tastefully. It yeah, it's it beautifully conveys the whole theme of the of the Anzac spirit, um, it, from the New Zealand side as well. So I like all the elements, but just yeah, as I said, for my preferences, it's a little bit too much going on there. But but each to their own, and I know that it's pretty much already sold out on the the Warriors page, a uh, Warriors yeah. store. So. Yeah. yeah, your thoughts? Are you you're going to be getting it? Yeah, I love it. Um, I like it. Uh, I've always been a fat, massive fan of those two jerseys I mentioned the the poppy jersey and the the flag jersey, and the fact that they've kind of combined that those two jerseys together. Um, yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from with a bit bit busy. I, I love the the um, silver fern that goes through it. They probably could have done without the the soldier, the but sun, being Anzac sunset, and, yeah. yeah, and all that. But being Anzac, I, I get that. It's, it's in there. Mm. Um, and it's funny because a lot of people have been asking about whether there was going to be an Anzac jersey. And I actually didn't think that they would release one. I don't one. think so either. They took their um, time. Yeah. But the fact that we're playing this Anzac day at home, you kind of, it makes sense that we've got an Anzac jersey to play in at home. You'd be in surprised first... if we didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Anzac game at home. So, yeah. Um, I think it's going to look great. Um me personally, mate, I just can't wait to see James Fisher Harris in the uh, blue home jersey next year. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> that is going to be good, <laughs> isn't it? They might even, yeah. Yeah, I might even, I might even buy it again just because he's going to be wearing. It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. 
Uh, Sean Whiskey says at least they got the image right with the soldier, unlike the Tigers. Yeah, when they oh, had the American, right. had the American the US um, Marine yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Was that last year? That was last year's Anzac Jersey. Oh, wasn't it? yeah. It, it was one of the years where they were terrible. I haven't really narrowed that down, have I? <laughs> there's always there's always one club that's a basket case each year that does something like that, and the basket case of 2024 is the Rabbits. So let's see what they come out with. They're the basket yeah. case club this year. Yeah, they did a they they've done a navy like a navy themed jersey. So it looks Again, like the yeah. yeah, it's it's completely. Well, the one thing the one thing I will say about this Warriors one is they've tried to incorporate as much of the blue and red and white and green sort of colours in there, yes, as well without being that massive eyesore that was that stained glass window jersey from back in 2015. Yeah, what well, probably one of my least favourite um, Warriors jerseys, and that's the, I think that was actually the first Anzac jersey that we made. So yeah, um, yeah. While it's not on that level. Um, I do like that they've tried to incorporate the club colours in there as well. Like with the Rabbitohs one, you look at that and nothing – I know it's an Anzac jersey, but nothing about it tells you it's a Rabbitohs jersey apart from the logo. Yeah, That's absolutely. Logo, so, yeah. 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 All right, let's get into the uh, the review, mate, of um, yeah. our win against Manly. Well, uh, win? <laughs> we will – Yeah. Yeah. It did. It did kind of feel like we got away with something there. Um, that yeah, what, what a game it was last Saturday afternoon at, at Go Media Stadium. Obviously, Manly having been one of our biggest bogey sides for a long time, um, coming against our old foe Daily Cherry Evans, and he certainly turned up and certainly lived up to his uh, reputation as being one of our biggest tormentors. He yep. did produced an absolute masterclass out there, our old yep. foe D uh, DCE. Uh, obviously, um, it was, I got to say, it was a pretty tough watch for a bit for the, for the majority of that game. Manly, like we, we were just, we just weren't quite in sync again. And it's been, it's been a bit of an issue for probably for most of our games this year, apart from the second half of the South game where the attack really clicked, we just sort of seemed to be off the pace a little bit. And it, it just, it just wasn't quite happening. Manly. Manly turned up to play. They were tough. They were gritty. And they were gutsy. They were probably the best side for 79 minutes. However, as we know from only a few weeks ago, games go for 80 minutes. Mm. And if there is enough time on the clock, anything can happen. And anything did happen. Um, an amazing finish. Controversial finish. Um, we will we will get into the, that talking point um, soon. But... It's one of those games where they say, like, the draw is you, the kiss from your sister, you know? It's like uh, you're sort of le le left feeling a bit empty. But it's kind of – it's one of those games where I feel like a draw was a pretty fair result. Um, and I'm – I, for one, was absolutely stoked to get one point out of that based on the yeah, way that we too. played for the majority of that game. And, and as we were just saying before we went live, like, you sort of look at it from two points of view. Like, if – if we were on the manly manly camp and we'd been up sixteen nil and only ended up with one point, you'd be filthy. Warriors yep. fans being behind for pretty much the whole game, and then uh, getting home, we're well, getting leveling up by the skin of our teeth, and then going through that grueling um, ten minutes of golden point. Um, yeah, we're pretty happy to get one point out of that. Yeah, yeah, it was a uh, it was the first time this year that we. Um, we took the field one to seventeen, where the the team that Webster named, and I think we all agree that that starting thirteen was probably the strongest th starting thirteen that we can put out on the field. That was probably our best mm. team. Um, we had Roger lead the team out. He, he was celebrating his two yep. hundredth milestone game in front of his family and friends, and also a big occasion for young Jacob Laban, who uh, after his debut last week, he got to play his first home game in front of family and friends at Go Media Stadium. I'm sure that's something he'll remember forever. Um, but yeah, the Warriors 22 with Tenny Zelezniak a double, Tavanga Johnson tries Johnson three from five goals uh, over the Seagulls 22, Cherry Evans a double, uh, Tommy Talao, Ben Trevojevic tries Cherry Evans three from four goals, uh, mate. As you said, um, uh, a, a, a draw, much better result than we were looking at when it was 22 14 with, with two minutes That's remaining. Cool. Um, yeah. I thought early on our attack looked pretty dangerous and, and effective. However, 
again, crucial handling errors prevented turning those those good possession uh, periods into points. Um, Jacko Ford, I think, with a couple of crucial handling errors. Yeah, and he has that in his game. To round one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Seagulls got they got the first try through a rare defensive error from our right edge, and then that deflection uh, from the ball that Tommy Turbo threw back close to the line kind of deflected off somebody's mm. legs and ended up in the end goal, and DCE dived on that. Uh, we lost our captain's challenge early. Um, Capel was penalised for pulling out of competing for the ball. They're calling that the disruptor. Now, the disruptor. For me, Capel never impeded Tommy Turbo. He, he never touched him. Uh, Turbo dropped that ball cold as far as I was concerned. Like, Capel's gone up for it, but he's gone up next to where Turbo was and kind of turned him. So, I don't know. I think it's yeah, he's, he's almost rule. overrun the play. So, yeah. 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 I thought I think it's a Curious. ridiculous rule. Um, I haven't seen too many of them, but then again, I haven't really watched uh, the penalties that are given in games. Don't affect me as much as they do when it's a Warriors game. So uh, <laughs> quite interesting. Uh, Manly got a second try. It was a double for DCE. The lead up work exposed some really poor communication with our right edge defence. Uh, we had some players not sliding, and the Seagulls kind of created three on one there. And I. I'm still crazy, wasn't it? watching that back several times. I still don't know how that happened. Um, Sucked in half of that side of the defence. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, then we had a handling error on our own line from DWZ, the fourth of the match for the Warriors at that point. Man, it capitalised and they scored their third try of the match out wide. They led 16-0 with eight minutes to go in the half. The Warriors had some excellent attack shape and a great attacking set inside Manly's half. It was probably our best attacking set of the half, but Montoya gets bundled into touch trying to beat the defence on the outside. Now, he does that so often, and he does that so often at the wrong time. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, uh, where he should have just cut in. But we did get our first try just before halftime. It was a beautiful pass from Torhu to, to Jazz, who scored under the post. And then there was a, a really interesting period of play where um, we had some quick thinking from CNK. That he took a quick tap from a penalty, and he split the manly defence up the middle, uh, only to kick the ball with a full set, uh, and a minute 30 remaining. Um, it would have been tackle zero on their 40 if he had just taken the tackle. We would have had a full set at them. Luckily, from the ensuing Manly set, DWZ gets that uh, intercept right on halftime to score in the corner for a, a 16-10 halftime score. And it was a bonus try for the Warriors at that a- point. Absolute bonus. Absolute um, bonus. He gave me a heart attack with that put down oh, in the wet conditions fuck. as well. I don't know yeah. why players insist on doing those one-handed put-downs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Um, we lost Jazz uh, just before halftime to a hamstring injury. That's going to keep him out for a, about six to eight weeks, yeah. they're saying. And we look like that first half that we had points in us, but the errors just kind of just let us down at the at the last minute. Um, we The Warriors had a great opportunity for points to over the second half. It was a Tamari Martin line break followed by a set restart but the end result again was just poor uh manly on the other hand made the most of their first opportunity with a great pass from dce to burbo and he went in to score and then the warriors hit back with some sean johnson vintage sj oh, magic throwback uh, for the 40 ages. meter run complete with uh speed deception his vintage sidestep for a great uh, much needed solo try and, and him talking about it afterwards he, he was nearly going to throw the pass but he noticed Turbo kind of went for that and slipped. And so he kind of dummied and went himself. Um, but, yeah, great piece of play by by Johnson. Uh, winding Vintage. back the clock. Vintage yeah, stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we got a little bit helter-skelter with our attack after that. with forcing passes, making some errors during crucial period of game. Uh, and then a try to DWZ uh, in the corner sets up that grandstand finish. Uh, and then... Uh, Sean kicks the ball from the sideline. Uh, manly kick off. Where, where he'd missed a, a very simple a shot simple earlier shot as well. Earlier. That's yeah. right. Um, manly kick off. That was from a penalty, the one he missed, wasn't it? No, it was from his own try. It oh, was that's right. Almost, it was too. almost right next to the sticks and he, yeah. he sprayed it. That's too right. Too much adrenaline um, pumping through the, through the veins. Manly kick off and, you know, we have a good set with the ball. Uh, you know that Sean's going to have to go for a two-point field goal because we're down 22-20 at that point. Yep. Seconds remaining in the game. He lines up the two-point field goal. Um, it falls short. Uh, his 
taken out by Josh Aloyer's <laughs> body hitting his leg. Um, and it's reviewed, and the Warriors get a penalty. Uh, goes penalty goal to tie up the game, 22 all, and it goes into golden point. Um, now, there's been a lot of controversy about that call. Um, in the rules of the game, it was the right call because uh, defenders cannot come in contact with the kicker's legs. Now, Alloy A, if you watch that, video back. He he doesn't run at Sean's legs, but Sean's leg on the follow through it's from the drop kick thinking, connects yeah. with his yeah, yeah, connects with his stomach. So um yeah, it's 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 in the it's in the rules of the game. Um and if it had happened against us, I probably would have been um spewing about that as a as a manly fan. Um, oh. It, it, it reminds but, me of when we played Manly there last year. Remember when there was that hit where Chance put Garrick on his back? Yes. And and technically, it's in the rules of the game, but, you know, it's one of those ones you would be absolutely gutted if that went, right. went against you. And that's I was waiting right, for yeah. Seabold. I was waiting for old uh, Seabs to blow up about that one again. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's... It's exactly as you said. It's It's within the rules of the game, but you feel hard done by. Um, uh, it's, there's been way worse. You've seen way worse. Alloy has been given a, a one much ban. I think he had, he got with an early guilty plea and you kind of, there had to be a penalty for that. And there had to be a suspension considering the precedent that was set the week before with Freddie Lussick. Lussick. Although yes, completely different. Um, Lussick was actually going for a legitimate charge down on a, on a kick, but same thing. You make contact with a kicker's legs, yeah, and it's it's a penalty. Um, I, I will give it to Seabold though. In his post match press conference, he was very diplomatic. Uh, in very he said, much he said, so. <laughs> he said he was very he's full of praise of the Warriors uh, in his uh, press conference. Um, he said that you know if he whinged about it, then he'd be classed as a whinger. If he did, if he said it should have been a penalty, then he's not backing his players, so he'll just choose not to comment, uh, which I thought was uh, quite uh, – what's the word I'm looking for? Mature, because you can you can guarantee mm. if that was Ricky Stewart, we'd still be hearing <laughs> about it today. Um, Indeed. Mate, that, that golden point period, oh, though, was geez. so stre- – it was the most stressful 10 minutes of footy I've watched for a long, long time. Wasn't um, it? Yeah. Because you just – because you know why? Because we're just waiting for that thing to happen that I didn't want to verbalise – but we all know happens so often when we come up against Manly in a close game. Yeah, the DCE absolutely. field goal. And we're just sitting absolutely. there waiting for that to happen. Uh, we were the only team that really had a legitimate uh, crack at a field goal. Sean Johnson uh, tried to have a crack at a field goal. Ended up with a seven-tackle set. And from that seven-tackle set, Manly still didn't get out of their half. Our defence was, was that good. Our, both, both our defence was outstanding. Yep. Outstanding defense in Golden Point period. We just yep. didn't, yeah, we didn't give them a sniff, which is a no. good thing because that DCE doesn't need much of a sniff. It's um, as you said at, at the beginning, mate. It's, it's, it's. We didn't deserve to be in with a chance to win that game, uh, and God knows we've been robbed plenty of times in the past when we've deserved to win. So I was kind of hoping it was our turn to to, to steal one. It wasn't to be, and a draw was probably a fitting mm. uh, end of that contest. Um, you know, allowing Manly to jump out to a 16-0 lead and then fight back from 22-10 down showed us that this Warriors group is resilient and have a great uh, mindset and, and stay in the contest. The thing that I hope Webby's concentrating on this week is why were we 16-0 down in that game? Mm. Uh, what happened to our defensive structures? Because this was a team that was averaging only 12 points against them a game going into that game uh, with the best defensive record in the comp. So... Um, you know, to to have a team jump out to 16 0 early in the contest was a bit of a worry. Um, mm. Before we talk about our players, uh, yeah, as you said, it was a masterclass from Dali Chavarians. All credit to him. Uh, he loves playing against us. He's a wonderful player. And I thought for them also, Tommy Talao was outstanding for them under the high ball because Johnson peppered him all game, all game. And he, he didn't make a mistake under the high ball no, didn't um, drop one. all game. Yep. No. So. Congratulations to, to him. Um, 
Yeah, stats were pretty even, 50% uh, possession. We only had a 70% completion rate, which is probably our worst of the season so far. Mm. Ran for over 2,200 metres, which is a massive amount of metres to be running for. Um, we had 712 kick metres compared to Manly's 821. That's what Dally, Ever- T- Dally Cherry Evans brings to that Manly side. Um, we made a hell of a lot more tackles, 439 tackles compared to Manly's 375. Uh, but we had 39 missed tackles and 13 errors in this game, and uh, they're areas that we're really going to have to clean up um, mm. in the next couple of weeks. Mate, we had some some outstanding performances. Um, Wade Egan uh, in the middle again, 95 run metres, 21 post-contact, five tackle breaks, 58 tackles. 58 tackles. Mate, for the third week Incredible. in a row, he's played played the full 80 minutes, or 90 minutes this week with the golden point. Uh, looked dangerous out of dummy half all game, and every time he chose to run, he found space. He just chooses to run at the right time yeah. um, and always makes yards. It's not wasted um, like dummy half scoots. Mm. Um, our front rows, Adam Fanua Blake and Mitch Barnett. Fanua Blake with 196 run metres, 78 post contact, uh, 47 tackles, and Barnett, 164 run metres, 68 post contact, 50 tackles. Um, you know, AFB, it's his usual alpha alpha male performance leading from the front. Um, but now he's got that absolute equal in Mitch Barnett. Uh, he just keeps getting better and better each week. He's in, he had some big carries. He had big moments in the game with some great defense. Uh, and now he's in that conversation for origin as well, um, which is really interesting. Um, so part of you as a Warriors fan, you want him to make origin. Yeah, origin. that's it. The other, the other part doesn't, uh, we like don't to want to miss him for period. any games. It would only Absolutely. be for one game, though. If we lose any players for Origin, it will only be against the Titans on the Gold Coast. So that's the only game that we would miss. Uh, our yeah. players would miss footy. Yeah, true. Uh, and then uh, the captain, Torhu Harris in the middle there, the usual performance from our captain. Uh, one blemish on his game uh, was that crucial knock-on in the Golden Point extra time with the Warriors on the attack. Um, that was really the only... Uh, uh, mistake that Torhu had in his game for that thing. Our back five, mate, what did you think of them? Yeah, oh, Chance was uh, was absolutely outstanding. Yeah, 346 metres, 89 yeah. post-contact, eight tackle breaks, uh, one line break, massive performance. Not not any real highlight moments, but it was just absolutely tough and gritty. Um, Dallin, again, 205 metres, 38 post-contact, four tackle breaks, one line break, two tries. Um, again, his set starts from the back fence are uh, a strength and absolutely fantastic. And, and he can find the line at yep. a crucial time, as he did in this game, right before halftime, and then to level it up. Um, Rocco Berry, defensively very sound for the most part. Again, 129 metres, 42 post contact, four tackle breaks, 25 tackles. His kick chase is, is a real feature of our game at the moment. He's always the first yep. one down there, putting yep. pressure on the winger. RTS, um, interesting when we come to discuss his performance. 201 metres, 77 post-contact, three tackle breaks, 16 tackles, although it was a mixed night for him. Two um, uncharacteristic handling errors that did put us under pressure, just sort of taking his eyes off the ball, looking at the opposition, and, yeah, yeah. completely out of character for a player of his quality. Yeah, But other, other than that, he was very good once again, as you see, like 201 metres. Uh, Montoya... Uh, 183 metres, 49 post-contact, seven tackle breaks, solid as ever again. But we have mentioned that he does tend to uh, drift across field sometimes and picks the wrong moments to sort of head for the corner. He has been he has been um, sort of making those um, errors a couple of times over the past couple of years. So hopefully he gets that out of his game. Maybe he thinks he's faster than he actually is, or that the defensive Possibly. player is slower. It reminds me of me playing touch footy. I'm like, yeah, I can get to the corner here, and you, you only end up running sideways, and then yeah. you realise you're about to run over the sideline. So I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did you make of the halves, mate? Tamari Martin, he had 91 run metres, uh, 18 post-contact, five tackle breaks, two line breakers, 17, 17 tackles. It's only his second game back from injury. Uh, definitely our best option in the halves with SJ, he, but he needs to start – Taking some of that kick responsibility off Sean because yeah, he, he does. Yeah, he didn't put any kicks in. Um, the only other player that put a kick in in this game was Chanel Harris Tavidi when he came on late in the game. So um, yeah, just needs to take a little bit of that pressure off Sean because if Sean's our only go-to kicker, it's very easy for the defence to to kind of get at him. Um, 
Mm. And then Sean, mate, he had 147 run metres. 40 of them was for that try alone. Try, yeah. um, Four tackle breaks, a line break, two line break assists, 665 kick metres, 13 tackles, a try and a try assist. Solid performance, mate. His, his 40, 147... back. Yeah, As we his said. 147 yep. run metres, proof he's gaining confidence in his running game again, which is great. Uh, and he, as we said, his try was a throwback to vintage SJ. Um, it was a first-rate performance from Sean um, in this one. Uh, only the one injury out of this game, mate. Jazz Tabunga with a hamstring tear. Spoke to Jazz uh, the other night. He's gutted, and he's going to be on the sidelines for an extended period. Mm. Uh, the interesting thing probably out of that one is coming off contract at the end of this year, Maybe that's it for Jazz. Like he, he doesn't get another. He doesn't get a contract extension after that. Um, not not too sure. Um, he is very good friends with Robbo, though. He's very close with Robbo, so there might be a bone uh, thrown to him at the end of the year. I'm not real sure. Uh, but yes, yeah, he was just starting to like find his way back into first grade after ha- having the whole off season off with injury. And it, yeah, mm. it's a it's a shame because everyone knows that you know I'm a massive fan of Jazz as a person. Um, so yeah, so we wish him well in his, in his recovery. Uh, we've still got Nia Kore on the sideline. He's out till about round 14. Luke Metcalf about the same time period. And we spoke to Dylan Walker last week. We had a lot of people asking us about Dylan Walker. Yeah. So I've reached out to Dylan last Thursday and he has assured me that he should be right for the Anzac Day game, um, clash against the Titans next week. So fingers crossed we get, um, Walker back because yeah, he's... His energy off the bench will be crucial. Uh, we, we're kind of really missing. We'll, we've been missing that in the past couple of weeks. We have, yeah. Yeah. Uh, player of the match, mate. Our Dean Bell Player of the Year. Ruin Hammers Dean Bell Player of the Year. Who did you give you 3 2 1 uh, to in this game? Yeah, mate. Three points. I went I went with Mitch Barnett. I thought he had an absolutely massive game and he, he made his presence felt. He had plenty of impact when he was carrying the ball and also in defense. There was that one key moment where he he forced that drop out, um, and he just looks like he's he's right up for it uh, at the yep. moment. As you said, career best form could be a smoky for your Blues. Who knows? Yep. But as Warriors as Warriors, as a Queensland fan and a Warriors fan, I hope he doesn't get picked. If that <laughs> makes any sense. <laughs> yep. Uh, my two points. I, I, I gave two points to Wade Egan without yep. actually um, making those breaks out of dummy half. He just looked dangerous the whole time. He adds so much to our team and we we don't really realize sometimes we don't realize until he's not there. Yeah. But he's just a constant threat around the ruck. Um yeah he 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 made his presence felt again and uh 58 tackles which was yep. massive in a when the sort of became a bit of a bog there at the end and we needed um that strong defensive um steal in golden point and one point sean johnson uh as as we've said so many times tonight it was vintage sj it was a real throwback to his free running days the sidestep is back the swagger it's all it's all back so i refuse to believe this is his last season um in the nrl surely with today's news he goes around again next year uh yeah absolutely um absolutely i think he will uh my boy yeah, my three two ones. I gave three points to Mitch Barnett. Also, I thought his uh, game was outstanding. He's just getting better and better every week, and uh, playing longer minutes now too. Um, I've I've been noticing he's kind of going off after Adam goes off. It they're giving Adam a break earlier in the in the game now, about the twenty minute mark. Mitch Barnett's playing through to about the thirty. Um, so yeah, I gave Mitch my three two one. Uh, my three points. My two points I gave to Chance. Nickel Klukster, I thought he was just gritty at the back, 346 run metres. Uh, probably would have been the most run metres in the round if not for the superhuman efforts of Joey Manu for the Roosters, who mm. we'll talk about later. Um, yeah, just did all that hard work at the back. And I, and my one point uh, I gave, like you gave to Sean Johnson, I, I just think Sean's really coming into his own again now. Um, he's, you know, at 16 nil down, he kind of took that game by the scruff of the neck and, and got the Warriors back into it. Um, so I gave him my one point, which means this week, mate, we've given six points to Mitch Barnett. He got the perfect score uh, and two points each to uh, Egan, Chance and Estray, which means Wade Egan has rocketed up to the top of our uh, season rankings, our end of year uh, Dean Battle medal winner. He's now on 11. Uh, Fanua Blake on 10. He's been joined by Mitch Barnett. 
uh, up there on 10. Uh, Torhu on eight, Roger on eight, Dallin on seven, Chance on five, uh, Sean and Tane Tuapiki on four, Jacko Ford on two, Rocco Berry and Tamari Martin on one. But no surprise to see that, you know, Wade Egan, Fanua Blake, Mitch Barnett mm. and Torhu Harris are the guys that are kind of up, up the top there. Um, just quickly, mate, uh, I'll just touch on New South Wales Cup. Uh, Warriors played the Sea Eagles at Go Media Stadium. It was... Uh, the Sea Eagles 24 over the Warriors 18. The Warriors fought back from being down 16-4 to lead 18-16 with 12 runs remaining, but they were unable to hold on to that lead and let in two tries to let this one get away from them. Some of the players in the mix for first grade putting in solid performances. Tane Chuapiki was good. Uh, Zion Mayu was good. And Leka Halasima uh, was also very good, reminding Coach Webster that they're knocking on the door if needed. And Pathways. Uh, our Harold Matthews Cup side uh, played the Eels at Leichhardt Oval in the third versus sixth elimination semi-final. The Eels actually hadn't lost a game going into this game. Uh, there's, there's three teams that were undefeated in that Harold Matts comp, the Bulldogs, the Western Suburbs Magpies and the Eels. Uh, the Warriors with a, a shock 30-20 to 20 win, I think you'd call it. Fantastic result, semi-final victory as I said, against the Eels team that hadn't lost a game all season. Uh, the Young Warriors now take on the undefeated minor premiers, the Bulldogs, uh, this Saturday at Henson Park in Sydney. So if anyone's in Sydney and got something, nothing to do on Saturday, get down to Henson Park. Um, great place to watch footy. <laughs> great place to watch footy. You have that guy riding around on the bike every time someone scores a try. Penny farming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's him. Um, yeah, this Saturday, that's at 11 o'clock. We, we watched the Warriors... Uh, Jets there last year, didn't we? The reserve grade. There. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was a good, great, yeah. great arvo out the footy. Yeah, it was. Real, uh, old school stuff, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so it's another big game for our junior Warriors. Uh, team riding a wave of success with seven wins from their past eight games now. And the Bulldogs haven't played for the past two weeks because last week they had the week off because they'd finished minor premiers, so they get a week off. The week before that, there was a stoppage in the comp because they had a couple of makeup games that a few teams had to play. So, um, yeah, Bulldogs haven't played for two weeks. Good opportunity for our young Warriors to to steal this one and get into the uh, Harold Matts Grand Final. So, um, yeah, that'll be a good one. Uh, and Jersey Flegg, uh, our Warriors went down. The Seagulls 20 over the Warriors 16. Mate, I'm sad to say, to say it, but the Warriors remain winless after, mm. what is it, six games and uh, anchored to the bottom of the ladder. So... Yeah, really need to find some form in that. They, I mean, they've been close uh, in the last couple of games. We yeah, really need to uh, find a win somewhere. That they do. And we will now move on to the remaining, uh, uh, review the remaining games from round six. And that kicked off last Thursday night with the Knights versus Roosters at a very different McDonald Jones Stadium from the previous week. They must, yeah. have, very good drain, must have very good drainage there. Because it was absolute, um, it was dead set underwater last week, but looked very good last Thursday. As the Roosters getting a 22 to 20 victory, uh, Tupo with a double, Radley and Smith tries, uh, Suali'i three from four over the Knights 20, Hastings best, Elliot tries, Ponga two from two, Gagai two from two. Bit of a controversial finish in this one as well, mate. How'd you, how'd you see it? Interesting game, mate. A couple of big names out for the Roosters in Tedesco and Walker. They had that uh, HIA uh, mandatory stand down. Uh, but the Roosters still managed to get the job done off the back of a Joey Manu masterclass. He, he was supreme, uh, breaking the NRL record for run meters with 373 run meters in this game and 10 tackle breaks. And the fact that he's in a regular first grade fullback is just mm. insane. Uh, he also holds the record for most run meters in an international with his 401 meters against Tonga. So he's now got the record in both. Um, announced this week that he's signed to go to Japanese rugby. Um, yep. I don't know how long that's for, whether it's just to One get out season. of here. One season. Yeah. So it's to help, miss, help, the, next year. help the Roosters get out of some salary cap uh, shit, <laughs> I reckon. Um, they don't have that kind of problems, though. That's not no. Um, made a staggering statistic out of this game. Um, a massive seven players ran for over 200 metres in this game. Joey Manu, uh, Daniel Tupo, Joseph Swatali, Victor Radley, Caelan Ponga, Bradman Best and Greg Marziu. And then another 13 players ran for over 100 metres. Um, absolutely, there's like 20 players in a game of footy ran for over 100 metres. Both teams over 2,100 run metres. was 4,300 4, run metres in this game alone. 
and nearly 1,800 post-contact metres. It's a staggering statistic. Um, yeah, staggering statistic. Yes, well, they the Roosters did enough to hang on for the win there despite the fast-finishing nights. And yep. we moved on to the first, the, the 6 o'clock game on the Friday night. This was... A, I, I didn't think it was going to be, but this was a very entertaining game. Uh, mm. It was the Storm versus the Bulldogs at Amy Park. The Storm doing what they've, they've done a number of times this year, getting the job done late against the Bulldogs, 16 points to 14. Pappenhausen, Smith and Bloor tries. Meany two from three over the Bulldogs, 14. Addo Carr with three. Um, and Burton one from three. Addo Carr, did you, did you know he was the fastest man on the planet? I did. I did. There's yeah, a few things I, I know about certain footballers. He's the fastest man on the planet, and apparently Damien Cook used to be a beach sprinter. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, it, it, a good game to watch, and it looked like for, again, about 70-odd minutes, the Bulldogs are going to get the job done, but, yeah, you can't sleep on the Storm. No. Uh, once again, the Storm continued that knack of being able to – Steal victories in the final minutes of the game and break the hearts of rival fans. That's three they've done this year now. Uh, but as you said, highly entertaining game of footy. So many solid hits from both teams in that first half and and, and from outside backs too. Um, Josh Adokari scored his eighth career hat-trick. Um, it was a true hat-trick with back-to-back-to-back tries within 14 minutes. Storm fullback Pappenhausen placed on report for a hip-drop tackle and then Sinbin for taking Stephen Crichton off the ball. Um, but for me, the... Storm not looking like that dominant Storm machine of past seasons, uh, but they're still finding a way to win games and get the two points. But, um, yeah, maybe not this week. They've got another tough game this week. Yeah, they're doing just enough to win, but you have to think it'll catch up with them soon. Yeah. Uh, the second the second Friday night game was your big blockbuster, the Battle of Brisbane. The third, the third Battle of Brisbane, or fifth, if you want to include the games between the Broncos and the Crushers from 95 and 96. But... It's 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 created a fantastic event up here north of the border. Um, everyone gets into this one. Everyone looks forward to it. The Broncos versus the Dolphins, and it was the Broncos who got away with the twenty-eight to fourteen win over the Dolphins. Cobb over the double. Willison Oates and superstar Reese Walsh got a try, and Good Walsh man. four. Yeah, Walsh four from five. Dolphins fourteen. Wallace Bostock and Asako tries. Asako one from three. Yeah, the big news in this game was the superstar Reese Walsh return, mate. Um, and it soldier. looked like a real, yeah. yeah, it looked like a real battle of Brisbane uh, was brewing with just two points separating the teams at half try time from a try apiece. Um, the Broncos did blow that game wide open with four tries in 14 minutes during that second half. The Dolphins showed some grit, I thought, to score two late tries, but by then the damage was done. Um, sad news for the Dolphins, they lost their fullback, mm. Hamaso Tabuai Fido, to a hamstring injury. That's a worrying trend of 2024, um, this hamstring injury yes, stuff. Hammies. Hammies and, mate, galore. what did you make of the incident involving Anthony Milford, the MILF, um, hitting the superstar Reese Walsh off the ball? Now, I know most guys wouldn't mind being taken <laughs> out by a MILF, but, <laughs> but seriously, I'm surprised that the MILF wasn't sinbin for that. Um, it was a blatant dog shot, uh, totally unnecessarily, and rightfully he was given a two-game suspension by the match review committee, but... Like, how is that just penalty sufficient in that game? That's just brain, ridiculous. Brain explosion from the MILF. I mean, yeah. Maybe trying to get, maybe trying to damage Reese Walsh's other cheek or something like that. <laughs> Giving a bit of symmetry. Brad Inger says, best MILF, best player of the game. I'm not saying it wasn't a good, like, I wasn't happy about it. I just, I just can't believe he wasn't Sinbin. That's all. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, but you certainly can't do that sort of thing to superstar Reese Walsh. No. Anyway, um, yeah, sat, uh, Super Saturday uh, was our the first game, the three o'clock game was the Warriors versus Seagulls, as we've touched on at Go Media Stadium um, before we discussed the draw. Uh, the second game, the 5.30 game, was Eels versus the Cowboys at Combank Stadium. And the Eels uh, winning 27 points to 20 over the Cowboys. Offen, Gowie, Lusick, Harper and Dejan Azi tries. Gutherson five from six and Uzzy with the uh, match winning field goal. Good to see him doing well. Yeah. And the Cowboys 20. Nanai, Chester, Valentine, Holmes, and Drinkwater. Holmes two from four. Um, how'd you see this one? Bit bit of an upset. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, firstly, um, Richie Sterling says, happy James Fisher Harris Day. So the 17th yeah. of April will forever be known as <laughs> James Fisher Harris Day in Warriors. Uh, JFH Day. day. Yes. JFH Day. Uh, mate, considering the results last week, this was definitely an, uh, an upset. Um, Parramatta hit the lead in that 26 minute and never really relinquished the game. Former Warrior Dejan Arzi scored the final try for the Eels and he kicked the field goal to secure a victory. Uh, Scotty Drinkwater, he played his milestone 100th NRL game in an, in an interesting piece of rugby league trivia. This was the first time that Val Holmes had scored a try against the Eels and he has now scored tries against all 16 NRL rivals. Well, he's so. definitely scored against us. We know that. <laughs> Yes, he has. Yes, he has. <laughs> okay, well, well, well done, Val. I'm sure he had no yeah. idea about that record, but there you go. <laughs> Another one chalked off. Uh, chalked oh. up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the third game of your Super Saturday was the uh, the Rabbitohs, the poor old Rabbitohs up against the Sharks at the Core Stadium. The game where we were led to believe was the 80 minutes that would decide the future of under siege coach Jason Demetrio. Didn't quite go the way that he would have been hoping. Um, and it was the Sharks who were too strong on the night, 34 to 22 winners. Although the Rabbitohs did show a, a bit of fight, which I think would have been encouraging for all involved at that club. But uh, yes. it was Mulatalo, Wilton. Mullet, Mullet Tyler with a double, Wilton with a double, uh, Kato and Bradley tries, Hines five from six, the Rabbitohs, Cheekam, Milne, Burgess and Tass tries, Hawkins three from five. Yeah. Sum this like one up said. for us. Like you said, mate, I think, um, you know, the Rabbitohs, they weren't able to produce a victory for under pressure coach uh, Jason Dimitri, but they certainly performed for him despite having so much adversity throughout that game. They battled bravely. They lost Cam Murray, Tavita Tyler and Tyrone. Monroe to injury all before half time. Um, and then they had two players off the field for HIA assessments during that game. They were down to 14 players for just over 40 minutes. Um, so they had a red hot crack. The Sharks scored four tries from kicks. So defensively, the Rabbits weren't that bad. Um, and again, like we've heard that, you know, the decision makers were saying that they were just looking for a, a committed effort from the players. Well, they certainly got that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. it's enough. Because uh, all reports were that Demetrio would be gone after this game, but he's he's held onto the reins. They've actually brought David Ferner in now as an assistant coach to help him uh, with the squad. Um, so yeah, be, I mean, I, I still think he's a dead man walking, um, but he may see out the season because if they're not going to get rid of him now, they won't get rid of him in five weeks or six no. weeks. So they'll 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 leave him for the season now, um, mate. For the Sharks, your mate. Uh, your favourite player, Prejack Mulatalo. Pre Prejack, yeah. He had a game to remember. He scored two tries, two try assists uh, for Teague Wilton and a try saving tackle. It was a, it was a good performance from Prejack. Um, but yeah, uh, Rabbitohs could be on the up, mate. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, there was. Right. There's some green shoots there, and I was I was watching the game. I'm thinking, he Demetrio would be really hard done by if he was sacked after that performance because you yeah. could see you could see the effort was there. So. And I'm no Rabbits fan at all, in any way, shape, or form. Well, it, it starts it starts the conversation, the narrative now, doesn't it? That is Latrell Mitchell the problem with that because they look like they were not so much a happier side, but like they they look like they're all far more energy. For this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the young guys coming in. You know, maybe who knows? Maybe when um when Latrell comes back, Joy. Jai Gray's done enough to hold on to the number one jersey and Latrell goes into the centres with Jack White. Maybe, I think um, they've already said something along those lines. Like he, his his debut was was so promising and encouraging that, yeah, they'll probably leave him there. They yep. need a little bit more energy and every, at fullback and Latrell's, you know, is a world-class centre. So we'll yeah. see see how that one pans out. Yeah, okay. But, but moving on to the game that we were all looking forward to, in round six, and that was the, the game of the round. Channel nine game of the round, and it was your Tigers versus the Dragons at Campbelltown. And it was the Dragons um, who held on for a 24 to 12 victory. Lomax, Bird, and Flanagan and Sewer tries. Lomax four from five over the Tigers 12. The Tui Kamanu and Kapoa tries. Coruscant two from three. A uh, big crowd out there at Campbelltown, it must be said, though. Um, unfortunately, the home side didn't quite reward them with the performance they would have been hoping for. 
they have a habit of doing this, the Tigers, when there's uh, big games honouring past legends. I remember I was at the game uh, a couple of years ago after Tommy Radonikas had ah, passed yes. away and they played the Cowboys and the Cowboys just tore them up. Uh, this was a game they were honouring one of Balmain's favourite sons, um, Keith Golden Boot Barnes, who passed away uh, last week uh, at the age of 89. And, yeah, the Tigers didn't do him proud. Um, and then, you know, you have a guy like Zach Lomax who's trying to get out of a contract but playing sensational footy to start the season. Um, Jack Bird, he was ruled out of this game with a Category 1 HIA, which is why he doesn't play against us this week. Uh, and the Tigers, mate, they just like any real creativity. They're, they've really missed young Lockie Galvin. He's back this week, so it'll be interesting to see how he performs. Um, but the other one, the other interesting thing out of this game was the first time I've ever seen the bunker having to adjudicate on a conversion attempt. Yeah, what about uh, that? Abby, Abby Coruscant's first bizarre. conversion attempt. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know how they thought that went through. <laughs> nah. Nah, me neither. I don't know. Like... Mate, it's a low-profile game, so it doesn't matter. The refs can do whatever they want. Well, can or they? Is it? We're getting, we're getting to a low-profile game, yeah. <laughs> we're getting to a low-profile game, and the ref from this one got sacked. So Yeah, yeah. Speaking yeah. of low-profile games, a game that, uh, I mean, if this was your Saturday afternoon blockbuster, well, well the, the hits just kept on coming on your uh, – yeah. sorry, Sunday afternoon blockbuster. The hits just kept su- coming on your Sunday <laughs> I mean, you guys in New Zealand, you must have been pumped to stay up for the Raiders versus the Tigers at GIA <laughs> Titans, sorry, at GIA Stadium. But what a game it turned out to be! Uh, the Raiders twenty-one to twenty winners in Golden Point. Schiller with a double, Young tries, Fogarty four from four, and the all-important field goal in Golden Point. The Titans twenty, Khan Pereira, including the match-leveling try in the dying seconds, Smith Shields and Jolliffe tries, Campbell one from three, Kelly. One from two. Now, he's had two Was shots it? at goal two. in first grade, and his second shot at goal, he just slotted it from the chalk <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to put it in um, the golden point. Yeah. Like you said, mate, another golden point thriller to end the round. Uh, it was a pretty intense opening half with the Raiders full of running. Titan showing some really good goal line defense in that game. Looked as if we were heading to another drawn result, but Fogarty slotted that winning field goal in the final minute of golden point. Titans, mate, they're still without a win, but showing a lot of improvement. Uh, they Jeez, finally they stopped. Did. They finally stopped that rot of twenty-eight points conceded each week. So um, it was twenty-one. It was close, but um, yeah, stopped the the twenty-eight uh, weekly points. I think Desi will be a little bit happy. Um, it was yeah, interesting. The, yeah. the 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 post match uh, press conferences were quite interesting with with Ricky <laughs> praising the the. The referee, Casey Badger, and, and Desi Bayon for blood. <laughs> oh, oh, you can't you can't miss um Sticky's press conferences, eh? Like no. and, and then and then uh, and the other side you got the mad scientist Des concocting watch, some kind of potion. Yeah. Must watch TV, it is. Must <laughs> must watch TV. Yeah. Yes, we got some personality <laughs> coaches, haven't we? Yeah. Yep. And it was yeah. the Panthers that had the bye. So your NRL ladder is shaping up a bit like this. So the Sharks and the Storm, they've jumped to the top. They're both on 10 points. So the Raiders and Cowboys are in third and fourth on the ladder on eight points. The Dolphins and Panthers are also on eight points. And fifth and sixth are the Warriors and the Sea Eagles on that, that seven-point um, tally to round out the top eight. And then the Roosters, Broncos, Eels, Dragons, and Tigers just outside the top eight, all on six points. The Knights and Bulldogs on four. And the Titans and the Rabdos are anchored to the bottom of the ladder, both on two points. And the Titans, the only winless um, team this year for 2020. Yeah. Well, we know Rabbits will jump to four points this week. They got the boy. So um, that it's going to be interesting, mate. The, the fact we're on seven points now, it's that point of difference, no pun intended, where we, we kind of stay out of that eight and – six point type thing so that one point could be the difference between us top four and uh top eight or out of the eight at the end of the year um because we're not going to be relying on uh points differential now while we we've got that odd point in our favor mm, so it's going to be right. interesting yeah it's got yeah. tiebreaker yeah uh mate moving on to round seven let's take a look at the warriors team that andrew webster's named for the round seven away game against the St. george illawarra dragons at wind stadium in wollongong on friday night a game that I'll be going to uh, this Friday night. Looking forward hey, to it, mate. Yeah, good. Yeah, good, I am yeah. going to this game. Yep. Okay, awesome. Uh, must be must be a good one. Yeah. 
Yeah. What's the team? Give us the team, mate. Okay. We got Charles Nickel Klukstar, Dallin Watane Zelezniak, and Marcello Montoya on the wings, Rocco Berry and RTS in the centers, Tomate Martin and Sean Johnson in the halves. The front row is Adam Fanua Blake, Wade Egan, and Mitch Barnett. And the back row is Jackson Ford, Kurt Capewell, and Tohu Harris. The same starting 13 from last week. On the bench, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Uh, Chanel Harris, Tavita, Tom Arle, Jacob Laban, and Adam Pompey, named to number 17. Number eight, uh, 18th man, Zion Mayu. The extended bench, Tane Tuapiki, Ali Leotawa, Ed Cozzi, and Paul Roach. I think it's pretty much as I would have expected. Um, great to see Jacob Laban get another game, rewarded with a with a fairly strong start to his first grade career. Adam Pompey, though, do we really think he's going to play? Or is it just sort of mind games protecting uh, Zion Mayu a little bit? And he, do you expect him to come into the come into the game day seventeen for the game on Friday? I think I think he's uh, he's short odds to do that. I think he has to, mate. When, when you look at yeah, small when bench. you look at the bench, yeah, you got Arle as the only genuine front rower. Then Laban can play in the middle, or he can go to an edge, and you know maybe. Uh, um, Jackson Ford can go in the in, in play in the middle. He's done that before in the absence of um, Tohu Harris last year. But um, I think Mayu's got to come onto that bench uh, because then you look at the the other extended bench. You got a fullback in Tuapiki. You got uh, a centre in uh, Leatua. You got a winger in Cossie, and you got a hooker in Paul Roach. So yeah. So who's who's it going to be? I mean, you're not going to you're not going to go any smaller on that bench, are you? No. No, I think, I think. I mean, the only other thing I can think of is if Adam Pompey plays an edge back row, middle forward type role, um, which is something we've kind of suggest uh, said in our own private conversations over the years that he might be better suited um, to an edge forward role. Uh, Pompey mm. just doesn't have the speed that you probably need in an outside back. Big um, man though, he's big and he's he's an awkward customer to tackle. He's he's tall and sort of lanky. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely is. So, yeah, possibly I, I, I'd i be bringing Mayu on um, into that squad. Uh, mate, for me, yeah, Malcolm Montreal, hurry up, Walker. Exactly. Yes. Hurry up, Walker. Hopefully next week. Come on, um, we just – the Warriors will be looking to have a better start than we did last week. We can't afford to leak points against the Dragons, especially down there. Um, you know, we meet, need to minimise that error count that, that uh, grew – to 13 last week, and then the missed tackles were 39. Um, our strengths are going to be our back five uh, set starts. DWZ Montoya in particular, who returned the ball with energy and effort in their run. CNK with his 260 and 340 run metres in the past two games uh, since returning from injury. He needs to have another solid performance. Um, SJ directing play, digging into the line, some good pass selection. Tamati Martin needs to start finding his feet in that halves roll along SJ and, and take a little bit of pressure off uh, with the kicking duties. Um, we'll have AFB continuing to lead from the front. We've got Barnett, who's really stepping up now and playing some long minutes and putting in some really good uh, effort in the middle of the park. And then Egan out of dummy half. He's the point of difference that he gives us in attack now with his pass selection and identifying the right time to run. Um, he's got that little one where he jumps out left, passes back right. He's got the one uh, where he kind of looks uh, beh- uh, back and passes to the lead runner. Uh, he's got a lot of things in his arsenal now that, that make him such a, a dangerous person around dummy half. And then our kick chase, uh, led by Rocco Berry and Kurt Capel on that uh, right side, because Shawnee usually kicks to our mm. right, to the right wing, because uh, he knows he can rely on Rocco and, and Kurt Capel getting that job done uh, in there. So. You know, they're, they're the areas that we need to be looking at this week uh, to get come away with the result. The key assignments for me are going to be uh, our markers putting pressure on Ben Hunt. Uh, he will definitely be looking for a 40-20 at some point in the game, and we know how much that changes a game. Um, so our defenders will have to be up on him. Our A and B defenders around the ruck being aware of Tyrell Sloan lurking behind his forwards, looking for an offload. He's got some speed to burn, so if he gets into the backfield, it's almost good night. Um, I don't think we've got anyone that can match him for speed. Um, and they've also got huge edges. Um, you know, they've got Suli, mm. um, Sua, Lomax. Um, Ravalawa. Yeah, Ravalawa. Mm. Uh, and that's where I think they'll try to expose the Warriors. I don't think they'll try to get us up the middle because I don't think they can beat us in the middle. Like, their forwards, Blake Laurie, Francis Molo, um, 
Blake, uh, what's his name? DeBellin, Jack DeBellin. They're That's not right. big men. They're, they're smaller middle forwards. So I don't think they'll win that forward battle, but they could win that battle out wide. Um, Zach Lomax is going to be dangerous under the high ball, particularly when the Dragons are defending our own, uh, attacking our own line. Montoya and RTS will be on that side of the field. They'll need to make sure they have good coverage on him and uh, supporting uh, chance uh, in the aerial uh, pursuit. And our kick chase game, putting pressure on those back three, not giving them time to run. Um, another uh, thing we have to be wary of is um, Ben Hunt's experience, his patience, his support play. And Jacob Little, he's kind of much like Wade Egan. He flies under the radar as a dummy half, uh, but he works tirelessly in the middle of the park. He's really starting to develop some some good dummy half play. Um, you got some mm. stats about us and the Dragons over the years, mate? I have, mate. So it's no secret that we've got quite a few bogey teams, but the Dragons still actually remain one of our biggest bogey teams. Not so much in recent years, but when you take a look at our overall history against this team, you'll start to see why. Um, this Friday will be our 37th game against St. George Illawarra. And the Dragons, in the 36 previous matches, the Dragons have won 24 to the Warriors 12. Um, from 2004 to 2015, we had one win against them. And that came in 2007. So that's an 11-year period where they absolutely dominated us. And our record at Wynn Stadium is absolutely diabolical. It's two wins and 10 losses. Although, interestingly enough, those two wins have come in our last two games there. Mm. Uh, so you have to go back pr pr prior to that. You have to go all the way back to the Illawarra Steelers days. And we had a win oh. against them in 1996. And since then... We hadn't had a single win there until 2018. So that was a bit of a breakthrough season for us. But since since winning, so since beating the Dragons in 2016 for the first time in like 12 years, we've actually had a fairly strong record against them. So our our most recent matches, we have we've won eight out of 13 against them. And there's a couple that we butchered that we should have won as well. So Don't, talk Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. That one game, you can't call oh, yourself a Warriors fan and not still have nightmares about that bloody golden point Corey Norman loss at Central Coast Stadium where we just absolutely self-destructed and imploded. What were we up by? Um, what were we up by? We were, we were up 18... 18 6, six for most of the game. Minutes, 18, with five minutes yeah. remaining. 18-6 going to the final 10 minutes, I think it was, and... That was when Chad Townsend made his return to the Warriors and he tried to kick a field goal when we were 18-10 up, thinking we were only up by six. Yeah. Uh, which pretty much summed it up. But yeah, oh, that, the last it's 10 minutes of that game was painful. Interesting. He's kicked five of them this year for the Cowboys. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, mate. <laughs> yeah. Um and, and just just so I did mention 2018. So we got a win at wins at win at win in 2018. An eight a nervous 1812 uh victory game that you were at as well, I, I believe. Was. I was. I was at I'll tell you who was at that game. Um remember the boys from the the uh fans in the East Stand, I think they were the one of the original Warriors podcasters. Um, oh, they, yep, yep. Remember that? View from the East Stand. View yes, from the East Stand. The, the OGs, so they, the absolute yes, OGs. Yeah. Yes. So they were there. They all came across for that. Um, Shani was there because she was our membership officer at the time. And the yep. Mad Butcher came out for that one too. So I actually got to sit with the Mad Butcher at that game, it was, um, which was a great experience. And I'll tell you who was probably – it's interesting because there was a comment before about Warriors bringing players home and, uh, you know, nightmare – players to return Adam Blair and Isaac Luke, but they were two of our best players that game. They were. Um, I remember yeah. Adam Blair put on a hit right at the end on and, a couple yep. I think mean Jason Nottingale <coughs> to like seal the game, forced the mistake. But yeah. I just remember we were pretty much we were up 18, we were up 18 nil at half time. RTS produced a magnificent try saver on Tim Laffey to yep. deny him a try. Laffey used to carve us up, but he denied him that day. And then they came out and went bang, bang, straight after halftime. It was 18 12, and we pretty much defended our try line for like the last 30 minutes of that game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just it was, constantly holding them out. It was a magic game. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, looking forward to being there this Friday, mate. Who are you tipping? What, what is your tip for this game, mate? 
Uh, I think it's going to be a lot closer than the last time we played there, where we won forty-eight to eighteen. I, I'm going to go. I'm going to go the Warriors by twelve. Yeah. Okay. Yourself. Interesting. Interesting you say that because I had the exact same thought. Oh, Warriors all right. by twelve. <laughs> yeah. Warriors by twelve. So there you go. Um, so maybe you know 24-12. 26, 14, yeah, I'm something think, to that I'm effect. thinking it might be something like 30 points to 18. Like, I think we'll okay. always be relatively comfortable, but they'll be there or thereabouts. they got so many threats, as we mentioned, and Lomax um, is the one that worries me the most in that team, yep. actually. Yeah, me yeah. too. Me too. All right, All let's right. take a look at the remaining games for round seven, mate, and give our tips. Uh, you yes. want to start us off on Thursday night? Thursday night, uh, another blockbuster game, the Roosters versus Storm at Allianz Stadium. And the Roosters, Tedesco returns from his HIA. Michael Jennings retains his spot in the centres. Joseph Suali'i moves to the wing. Connor Watson named in the halves with Luke Keary. And um, Sam Walker named on the extended bench for the Storm, Tui Kamakamika. He's ruled out through injury. Uh, Big Nass, Nelson Sofa Solomona returns for the front row for the first game this year. And Joe Chan returns on the interchange bench. I think the Roosters uh, will finally get the better of the Storm. I'm going to go the Roosters by six. I'm going to go the Roosters at home. Roosters by eight. I think Tedesco being in is a big one. Um, yeah. And, I mean, as I said, the Storm have been winning games, but they haven't been blowing teams off the park. And they've been kind dominating. Of been, yeah. No, they've been, no, that's right. They haven't been dominating. They've, they've got a lot of young blokes in that side, and I think the Roosters will just have a bit too much experience for them. Uh, Friday night, Dragons vs Warriors at Wynn Stadium. Quickly go through the changes. Jack Bird, he's out with that HIA. Zach Lomax moves to his preferred uh, position in the centres. Christian Tuipolotto, he's named on the wing. Roman Faitala Mariner named in the back row with Ben murdoch Masilla named on the bench. For the Warriors, an unchanged 13. Uh, Jazz Tavanga, the only one not named from last week due to injury. Adam Pompey named on the bench. And Zion Mayu named as 18th man. We've both given our tips. Uh, Warriors by 12. Uh, and then the second of the Friday night games is the Eels versus Dolphins at TIO Stadium up in Darwin, uh, where the Eels always take a game up to Darwin. Mm. Um, uh, for the Eels, Dejan Nazi, he retains his half spot. Uh, Blaze Talungi, he's been named on that interchange bench. Mike Sivo, still not in favour at the Eels, is named on the extended bench. Uh, for the Dolphins, uh, Hamasai Tabuai Fido um, out with a injured... Uh, hamstring injury, I think it is. Trey, Trey Fuller has been named to replace him at fullback, playing his second NRL game. Max Plath returns from suspension. And Sean O'Sullivan has been named on the interchange bench. I'm going to take the Eels, mate. I can't, I can't get a read on either of these two teams. I'm going to take yeah. the Eels. Uh, and I'll say the Eels by 10, Cardi Party for a try. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. Get out your glow sticks and your Get whistles. Get out your glow yeah. sticks for the Cardi party, people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, I just think the hammer um, being out for the for the Dolphins, they just lose so much um, there. And, um, yeah, I think the Eels will do it comfortably by 14. Yep. Okay, moving on to Super Saturday. And your first game is Panthers versus Tigers, Carrington Park at Bathurst. And the Panthers, Nathan Cleary, he's given more time on the sideline with his hamstring injury. Brad Schneider retains the halfback spot. And Jack Cole named his 18th man. The Tigers, Brent Naden named in the centres. Uh, Galvatron, Lockie Galvin, returns from his suspension. Johnny Bateman is back from injury. And Latu and Samuela Fainu are named on the bench. Look, I think the Panthers will, will be too good. I'm going to go the Panthers by 16. Yeah, I'll go the Panthers by 12. Um, yeah, Cleary was expected back. They're giving him some more time. He'll be right for Magic Round. You watch. Um, yeah, he'll come straight back in. For straight Magic back Round. in. Yeah, yeah right, well right as rain. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I'll say. It, what did I say? Panthers by twelve. Twelve. Yes. Yeah. And it wouldn't be a Super Saturday without a game at Sheba Super Stadium. And <laughs> yes, we have the Titans versus the Sea Eagles. And Phil Sami named at fullback. AJ Brimson. Uh, Phil, filthy Phil Sami, as they call him on Triple M Radio. I don't know yep. if they know they got some dirt on Phil, but anyway, filthy Phil Sami. I think he's AJ got that Brimson. filthy moustache. I think that's what it is. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah, it's a little bit little bit porno, isn't it? Yep. Um, yep. AJ Brimson named in the halves. David Fafita named to start. The Sea Eagles. Jason Saab is back from injury. Uh, Ruben Garrick returns from HIA stand down. Matt Lodge. 
uh, named to play his first game of the season. And Nathan Brown named on the bench. Josh Aloye is serving his one-match suspension. It'll be interesting to see how both teams go after playing 90 minutes in that grueling contest. I still think, despite the Titans' progress last week, I still think the Sea Eagles will be too good. But I think it will be close. I'm going to go the Sea Eagles by four. Yeah, Desi coming up against his old club. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I don't know. I, I still, I, I think one of the big things that the um, Titans have had going for them in the past two weeks has been the energy that Jaden Campbell's brought to their performances and the fact that he's not playing because he's injured. I think that's going to be a massive blow for them. Um, Ruben Garrick back for the Seagulls. Jason Saab on that wing. I think the Eagles, I think they'll do it pretty easily. I, I think 13 plus um, for the Seagulls. Okay. Moving on, a to what, what's is this? Is this correct? The Broncos are playing a Saturday night game. Is yeah, that a mystery? They, 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 this will be Raiders win on forfeit because the Broncos won't know where, where to go. Oh, it's at Suncorp, so they'll get there. <laughs> Sorry, they'll get there. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, Broncos versus Raiders, amazingly. Suncorp Stadium on a Saturday night. What? No prime time free to air game? Interesting. Yeah. Um, for the Donkeys, uh, Adam Reynolds named uh, remains injured and Jock Madden at halfback. For the Raiders, Chevy Stewart uh, re- re- retains the number one jersey and Atta Mariota named in the back row. I think this will be a close game. I think there'll be plenty of points scored, but the Broncos will have a little bit too much for them. I'm going to go Broncos by two. I think it'll be a real close one. Yeah, Broncos by four. I'm, I'm going to go. I think you know, I agree it'll be close, but I think the Broncos will just get there purely for the fact that they're playing at Suncorp. Um, yep. I think that's their thing. Uh, Sunday footy. Um, is this the game of the round now? No. So we're back to 2 <laughs> o'clock on a Sunday. Um, so we've got the 2 o'clock game on a Sunday, uh, which is the Bulldogs versus Knights at a core stadium for the Bulldogs. Connor Tracy has been named at fullback. Chris Patolo named in the front row. Josh Curran named to start at lock. Curtis Moran returns from suspension. He's been named on the bench. Blake Taff returns from his HIA stand down. Uh, he's been named on the bench as well. Um, for the Knights, it's an unchanged 17. Uh, that What's his name? Adam O'Brien is named for the Knights. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's this is a tough one to pick, isn't it? It's hard to get a read on both of these teams how they're really you know going, what? how they're really traveling. I'm going to go for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs by six. I'm going to go for an upset. Okay. Oh, look, I I think well, the Knights won 66 nil there last year against the Bulldogs. I, I know it's a different Bulldogs team, but I I'm, I think the Knights will get it done by eight. Okay. Yeah. The Bulldogs have the world's fastest man, fastest man on the planet. Oh, uh, yeah, fair point. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> that's our tips. Uh, and the final game, the game of the round, and it probably is the game of the round, I would say. Uh, Sharks versus Cowboys at Points Bet Stadium. Uh, for the Sharks, Se- Sione Katoa is out suspended. Sam Stone Street is named on the wing to make his debut in his uh, place. For the Cowboys, no changes, mate. Uh, they're going into this without... Any changes? It's a tough one to pick. Um, Very hard. I'm going to pick the Sharks at home. I'll say Sharks at home by two. Yeah, I... Yeah. Cowboys have had a bit of the wood over the Sharks lately, and I always think back to that finals game where the Sharks were giving it to them and then the Cowboys came back and beat them, uh, much like the game that we played against them last year. Oh, hang on. I just don't know if I can trust the Sharks, but I'll go with them 10... I'll go with them by 10. Sharks by 10. Cowboys are a top eight side. Does that mean the Sharks don't win because they can't beat top eight sides? Yeah, but they haven't finished in the top eight yet and they weren't a top eight side last year. Okay. They're in the top eight now, though. Okay. Well, it depends on the criteria. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the Rabbits get the much needed buy. Um, so that's the round previewed with all our tips. Uh, next week, we will be back live on Wednesday, the 24th of April at 7 p.m. to review the Warriors' Round 7 game against the Dragons at Wynn Stadium. And we're going to preview our Round 8 Anzac Day game against the Titans at Go Media Stadium. It's our first uh, home Anzac Day game since 2015. So it's going to be a big day for all the home fans. Um, uh, hopefully, 
all the uh, Sydney-based Warriors fans, South Coast-based Warriors fans, get out to Wind Stadium on Friday at 6 o'clock to cheer the boys on and there. support them. I will be there. I definitely will be there. Uh, and just uh, we'll also be joining uh, Warriors NRL Fanatics on his channel next Tuesday uh, to pre- preview the Anzac Day game with him. So that should be a little bit of fun. Yeah, so tune into that one for sure. Yep. Um, before we wrap it up for the night, again, I just want to acknowledge and thank our wonderful supporters, especially our Patreon supporters for their continued support, and give a special shout out to our gold gold tier Patreons. A lot of you guys were in the chat tonight, so it's um, great to have you guys along as always. And those are Al- those guys are Alf Tuolave, Malcolm Earnshaw, Chris Wellington, Nigel Phillips, Lisa Marie Bateman, Sean Whiskey, Ken Wills, and Stevie Williams. Guys, uh, have a look out. Check your Patreon because we're doing our first round of T-shirts. So all our gold Patreons, get in touch with us and you'll be able to score your first uh, Ruin Hammer T-shirt, which comes with your membership. So you can get yourself a Rocco Berry shirt that Hammer is sporting there tonight, or you can go with some of the Up the Waz designs that we've got. Go and check out our store. Um, and if you, any of you guys watching do want to show your appreciation and support, you can head to our Patreon page. The link is on the screen at the moment and it's in our bio as well you can subscribe to our bronze tier general support level that's just three dollars a month or our silver and gold tiers which as we just said includes support and merchandise and other benefits including a live watch we're going to be in, we're going to be organizing a live watch at some point this year and we will be extending the invitation to all of you uh patreon supporters if you did want to join us for that but we'll give you more detail details about that later and um, as i mentioned before our red bubble store if you want to grab yourself some merchandise um, head along to the Red Bubble store. Uh, there's new designs going up there daily almost. So go in and check it out. Um, grab yourself a bargain. We've got player shirts. We've got game shirts. We've got up the wire shirts. We've got anything you want up there in a variety of um, clothing. So go check it out and grab yourself a bargain. Absolutely. Uh, Chris Hardy has asked, are you boys coming to New Zealand this year to watch a game at Mount Start? We certainly are. We Absolutely. are locked in. We are locked in for round 12 against the Dolphins at Mount Smart Stadium, um, which is on Sunday, the 26th of May. I think it's a two o'clock game um, here in Sydney, which would make it a four o'clock game in New Zealand, I guess. Uh, I'd say yes. it's a Channel 9 game. It's a oh, Channel, it is a 9, Channel game, 9 game. So it'll be oh, a six, 6.05 kickoff oh, um, over in New Zealand, so four o'clock over here in Australia. So your first visit to Mount Smart Stadium. It is. Believe it or not, mate, I've been a Warriors uh, supporter from day one. Always lived here in Australia. Um, always uh, wanted to get back and watch a game, but for various reasons in my personal life, um, where I became a, a single father of five kids, raised them on my own from uh, 2001 onwards. Uh, just never had the the finances and the, could take five kids over to New Zealand to, to watch a game of footy. So it's just one of those things I never, mm. never got back there. And then once I organized that I was going to go back and watch a game, um, that was 2020 and then COVID, COVID hit. So didn't get back there. So yeah, I, I, I'm going back for two reasons. Uh, one, obviously to watch a game of footy, but it also coincides with uh, the passing of my dad, um, last year, and we're taking his ashes back um, to take home to the Marae. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a trip over over to New Zealand uh, for that, and hopefully it's the first of many uh, games that I can get back to New Zealand uh, and watch the boys play over the coming seasons. But, yeah, looking forward to that one, mate. going to be great to have you there with me uh, to experience that. I know you've been to a couple of games at Mount Smart. I'm really looking forward to, to sharing that experience special, with though. you. Yeah, absolutely mm. it is. Really On that note, uh, that's it for tonight's show. Thank you all uh, for tuning in and watching us. Thank you all for those who continue to support Ruin Hammer uh, on all our uh, socials. It's very much appreciated. Uh, we will see you next week, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, here on our channel um, to review this week's game, Preview Anzac Day. If you want to catch us before that, you can see us on Warriors NRL Fanatics on Tuesday night next week, um, talking about the the um, Titans game. If you're in, Preview as I said, Anzac if game. you're in yeah. Sydney, um, I've already reached out to Butch Malcolm. Uh, Butch is going to uh, take us out for a day when we're over there, so already got that sorted. Um, yeah, if you're in Sydney uh, this Friday... 
try and get down to Wollongong to support the boys. I'm sure there's still tickets available. There is a core group, about 50 of us, that are sitting in a, a section of the crowd. So listen for it. Richie Morgan's going to be there with his gr- drum, so that's going to be coming through the TV loud and proud. Uh, and if anyone's around Sydney on Saturday, uh, get out to Henson Park at 11 a.m. Um, and what support our uh, young warriors in their uh, quest to become uh, grand finalists. Uh, can we get Butch on the show? We've asked him so many times, but he's very, um, he's very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's not tech savvy. Technologi- technologically challenged a little bit. Yeah. So we're definitely hoping that when we get over there uh, to New Zealand, when we get to spend a bit of time with him, we'll do maybe a pre-recorded one with him. I know he wants to sit down and do a pre-recorded one with us that he can put on his page. So it's kind of we'll probably do a little bit with him uh, when we get over there. But yeah, he's one of the guys that we've we've tried to get on uh, a couple of times, but he's he's very reluctant. Reluctance is word reluctant to come on because he's. He's not tech savvy. And, of course, too, the time difference over there and the fact that Rob and mm. I both work, um, you know, full-time jobs here in, in Australia, there's that two-hour time difference and uh, it'll be, like, pretty late at night for him to get on when it's a time that suits us after work. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. We will do a vlog. We'll definitely do a vlog when we're over there. Um, so, yeah, a couple of, couple of interesting ones coming up too, mate, uh, just off topic. Um Warriors have reached out to us again. Nothing set in stone at this point in time, but it looks like there's going to be another fan event coming up uh, in uh, the Titans game this year. Titans game. Yep, absolutely. So another, yeah, Warriors fan event. They are stressing members only uh, for the post-game. Pre-game, not so much, but definitely the post-game where the meet and greet with the players will be a members only event. Um, And the details of that will be found in the coming weeks on here on uh, Ruin Hammer or through Warrior Nation, Richie Morgan and Warrior Nation. And for the Sydney-based fans, there's going to be one uh, when we play the Bulldogs in round 18, um, 6th of July, I think it is, uh, at a core stadium. We're going to do it. There's going to be a similar uh, meet and greet after the game, members only, but the pre-game won't be members, specifically members only. Um, New South Wales Cup playing down in Wollongong on Saturday, I believe. I was looking at the draw today and it said Henson Park, so not real sure, but it will keep people updated on that one, mate, um, once mm. it's all confirmed. But, yeah, that's yep. it for tonight. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us, um, and we'll see you all next week. Up the was. Up the wires. Happy James Fisher Harris Day, everyone. Take care. We'll see you soon.